All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about blending data in Google Data Studio. So if you're familiar with Excel Power Pivot, blending data is pretty much similar to setting relationships in Power Pivot. So basically it allows you to create reports from multiple data sets without the need of doing VLOOKUP. So you can establish some sort of relationship between different tables and get it to build the reports for you. So in this particular data set that I'm using, there is really no second table. So I'm gonna create a table myself. Now, if you're not familiar with what I've done so far, just go ahead and watch the part one and then come back to this part after that. So in this case, the way I'm going to use the relationships, I'm gonna use them to try to eliminate some of this detail that's in my reports that's way too much. So what's happening here, we have all of these job titles where we have only one person hired for that position and all of that shows up in the report and makes this report actually hard to read. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just try to group this in a more meaningful way. I'm gonna go ahead and export this to Google Sheets. So I'm gonna right click on this and export to Sheets. I'm gonna call it job titles for data studio and take all of this data and just sort it by record count. So control A to get the whole thing, data sort range and it has headers and I'm gonna sort it by record count Z to A. So here we go, now we have some positions where there are quite a few people and there are also positions that there are not that many people. So I have to just pick some sort of line where I'm gonna just cut this off. So I'm not sure what that line is gonna be to be honest with you. So for now, let's just say anything lower than 11. So I'll go here and do this with a function. So I'm gonna call this position and I'm gonna do a quick if statement I'm gonna say if the record count is less than or equal to 10 comma then I'm gonna call this other maybe I'll just do other positions comma and for everything else I'll just take the position that's already in here so that job title so if I drag this formula down now Make this bigger a little bit. If I do control down, see all of this stuff that's lower than whatever it was supposed to be, it's gonna be other positions now. And everything else will just have the same position as it is over here. So later on, if I decide I should have filtered to less than 10, I can come back and change this. But basically now we have this new table that has job title and it has position. And I wanna basically grab the appropriate position based on the job title. So I'll move this to a separate folder, call it data studio training. And I'll just move this file to that folder just to keep it organized. So now I'll go back to my data studio, go back to edit, click on this pivot that's doing what it's doing. And I'm gonna click on here under data source on this plus blend data. So it gives us this whole thing, which I don't want. I'm gonna hit escape. Now currently we just have that original data source. Now we want to use this new Google worksheet as a data source as well. So I'm gonna add another data source. And this time it should be a new source that's actually not here. So we have to actually go the other way around. So for now, I'm just gonna remove this, close this and discard changes because we need to add that as a source first before we get to this. So I'm gonna go back to my main data studio screen and you can get this by going to datastudio.google.com. 
So here you should have this tab data sources. If you're under reports, you can go under data sources and we're going to add that Google sheet as a data source. So I'm going to go under create data source. And this time the source is going to be not a file upload, but Google sheet. And I'm just going to select that spreadsheet, click connect. So we have all of this stuff. We don't really care about this annual pay. So I'm just going to disable that. We also don't really care that much about this record count stuff. So I'm going to disable those as well. So I'm just going to keep job titles and position, both are text. Go on top here, name this connection. Go back. So now we have our new data source. It should show up here under data sources. Let me refresh this. There it is. So now I'm going to use this as the secondary table. I'm going to go back to this, click on this and click on blend data again and add another data source. The data source will be the one that I just made. So it should be in here someplace already. So it's not showing up. I probably just have to refresh this. So again, click on this, blend data, and add that second table that was our Google Sheet as a data source. So I'm gonna click add. Uh, it should be in here. See if I scroll down under added data sources, job titles, there we go. So what I have to show, I have to show the join key from the left table on from the right table. So it picked up these two columns for whatever reason which are not accurate. So I'm just going to X out of this, X out of this, remove all the join keys from the first table. So the key is going to be that column that I have in both tables, which is going to be job titles. So I'm going to take job titles and move it here as a join key for the first table. And for the second table, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the job titles and move it as a join key. So the metrics, for this, for now, I'm just gonna remove the metric that I have. And now I have to choose what is the fields I want from the right table. So the field I want as a dimension from this table is the position. And the field I want from this left table, well, I need metrics. So the metrics we were going to use here, one of which was the record count. And the second one was the total pay. And I wanted to use this department as a filter in here. So I'm going to add that as a dimension here, which should let us then use it in uh, filters in our report. So I'm going to do all of this, press save, close that and see what we get. So now we should have our blended data. I'm going to click on this. So it refreshes. Let's build the report. So it's not going to be job titles in row dimensions. It's going to be the position. I'm going to remove this out of here and I'm going to take record count and put it in metrics and get rid of this column dimension. So now I have my totals. Let me actually just sort this by the record count. So I'm going to scroll down. Sorting should be not by position, but by record count descending. So we have police officers, we have other positions, which are all those positions that I've defined here, basically as other position. And then now let's try to add our filter as a dimension on this one. So I'm going to go here. Well, the first thing we have to make sure, we have to make sure we're using the same data source. So for this one, the data source now is this blended data too. So for this one, the filter, I'm going to go here and change that. So I'm going to click on that and that blended data too is the one. Go back and I'm just going to do again the dimension and metric. So the dimension I wanted was department and the metric I'm going to do record count. And now we should have a filter on top of this. I'm also going to add the total pay to our 
pivot table matrix. So I'll go back and add total pay in here and switch this to average. So make this a little different sizing. Possibly change the size for some of these. Let's take a look what happened in the reporting side. So if I go under view, so we have this and we should rename this column again, but that's not a big deal. So we'll go back here. Let's say I want to look at fire department. So now we're looking at fire department and we get our totals. And at some point there should be this other positions, which is everywhere where the count was again, 10 or less. So I think we picked up a pretty good breaking point. Maybe we could have gone a little higher. So here now, if I go to police, remove fire, we're looking at like police officers and then the next category and so on. So I could probably just sort this by total pay. So if I go back to edit, click on this, I'm going to go here and do sort by total pay. And I'm also going to just rename that total pay and call it average. And now we have our report. So if we wanted to change this, we can go back and change our data. So right now, if I, let's just take a look at this. So if I go under view, see, I have all of these totals. And maybe we want to just group this a little more in that less than 10 category because there are still a lot of options here. So I could now go back to my worksheet. I'm going to go back to the top and change this formula. Let's say anything less than 40, we want to call it other positions. Drag this formula down. I'm going to do command shift down and command D. Drag this formula down. And now we should have a new update for our data. Now, if I go back to my data studio report, which was in here, I have to refresh my data to get this update. So I'm going to click refresh data. Now see it connected to this. It made all the updates. Now we got this breakdown as a result of the change that I just did. And just keep in mind when I did this less than 40 or less than equal to 40, that's less than or equal to 40 for all of them combined for all departments. So if you had the same like commander in multiple departments, that's what we're looking at for less than 40. So there's a chance there's going to be a number record count that's not 40, even though it doesn't seem that way. So let me try to do now less than 100. Let's see if we can group this a little more. So I'm going to go here and do less than 100. Again, command shift down, command D to drag this formula down, command up. Now I'm going to go back and reload this. Now we have this grouped like this. Again, I'm going to just choose, let's say this. And good, now we don't have to look at that huge table. And if we switch this to, let's say, fire department, again, a table that's possible to read and understand what's going on. Now I'm going to do a couple of changes here. Now you see this record count is still showing us the record count of everything. I would also like to add the average pay in general for that department in here so it shows up. So to do this, I'm going to click edit. Now this record count is currently attached to our first data source. Now we want to use this blended data source for this. So I'm just going to switch this to this data source and make sure I get the right metric in here, the record count. So that's one. I'm going to copy and paste this command C command V and switch this to instead of record count to total pay and switch that to average.
So now these two are connected to the same data source, which means our filter should be connected to these as well. So if we go back and view and filter this to, let's say, fire department, see the record count will just filter to that and that should also give the average. And again, if we go to, let's say, this one, we have our totals. So go edit this one. I would probably style this in a way that we don't have those decimal points. Now this is connected to our C blended data source, but we can also have another report, let's say on this page two, that is connected to our original data source. And we can just do a report out of here. So I can do job titles as row dimension and I'll go metric as record count. And maybe sort it by record count. So here we go. So this one is the one that's not the blended source. So it's not using that Google sheet to assign the positions. So as long as the filter now is connected to that data source here, see that should be filtering this particular report, but it should not be touching our first report. So we can have different visualizations basically connected to different data sources. But hopefully that gives you an idea how you can blend data. And this pretty much eliminates most of the reasons to do a VLOOKUP to bring some other column over. Just keep in mind that unlike VLOOKUP, when this does the joining, if you have more than one option associated with one of the values, so for example, if you had two police officers, that would end up duplicating your rows so you want to be careful and make sure when you're joining on the secondary table, there is only one unique value on your join column. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.